Welcome to the Darting Through the Faith podcast. I'm Father Sean Wilson. With me, as always, Julia Monin. How's it going, Julia? <laughs> it's going well. How are yeah. you, Father Sean? I'm great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. It mm-hmm. seemed rather straightforward. But, yeah. And kind of just like, I don't know, a complete <laughs> lack of depth. Sure. But anybody who knows me, that's kind of that's part of who I am, complete <laughs> lack of depth. So, um, And that's not true either. Well, I'm all a facade. Oh, Facade? <laughs> Facade? Facade? I, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You remember that one episode where we went through and like you were really like on your literary game and you were saying all these really great big Fancy words. Fancy words, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I was like marking them down as we went through. That was fun. Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like playing bingo with big words that Father Sean knows. Anything over six letters, there's a space for that. <laughs> over six letters. <laughs> Rainbow. (laughs) (laughs) Wait, is that over six letters? Yes. Okay. Yes. Rain has four. Bow has three. Well, you know. Four plus three. (laughs) Math is hard. Seven greater than six. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyway, judging by how we're starting, I don't think this is going to be one of those episodes where I am telling up your literary genius. We'll see, though. It's certainly not going to be one for me. We'll see. Yeah? We'll see. All right. I mean, it's... The podcast is still young. <laughs> okay. So let me ask you a question. I didn't know what question I was going to ask before I said that. I just was hoping one would pop in my head. <laughs> <laughs> is that, you know, that uh, Michael Scott in the office where sometimes I just start talking and eventually I try to find the point of what I'm going to say. Like, and he just keeps repeating himself yeah, over and over again. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like rambling. And so, yes, that's what I just did there. Mm-hmm. No, I really was going to ask you about the end of the liturgical year coming up because this will be posted on Friday, mm-hmm. and Sunday is mm, the Feast of Christ the King. Yeah, actually, it yeah. has has a different name. The official name is Our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of the Universe. Oh wow! The Solemnity of Our Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> the King of the Universe. That's pretty sweet. Isn't that sweet? Yes, the king of the universe. Yeah. That means little small planet out there past mm-hmm. Pluto. He's the king of that. <laughs> right. A star somewhere that's burning up right now. Mm-hmm. Jesus is king of that. King. Right? Right. This room, mm-hmm. Jesus is the king of that. Right. Your heart? The king. It's supposed to be. That's right. <clears throat> yeah. That's right. Right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So then that will that'll be our last week of the... <gasps> What? I just thought how to celebrate the solemnity. Oh, golly. Oh, golly. We should go to Burger King. Oh, jeez. And like claim it for Jesus, the <laughs> true king of the universe, right? Oh, okay. Just, I mean, not okay for me, but I, about it. I think I could get someone yeah. else to do that with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you scheduling a play date for uh-huh. me. <laughs> Welcome, son. <laughs> uh, Circle gets a square yeah. in our previous conversation. Yeah. Here, so, yeah. yeah. So anyway, end of this will this will be our last week then in mm-hmm. this liturgical year, right? Yeah. And then here we go, new calendar year. Yeah. That's crazy. We're going to Advent. It's awesome. Yeah. <sighs> anyway, this which is, means the year of the Eucharist is wrapping up too, because that'll be the end oh, of the yeah. end of the calendar year. Okay. Yeah. That's kind of sad. It is. But good. It is. I mean, it's good to move on. Are we doing like another year next year? We're not. Yeah. We're not. Well, there's a lot of... Right. With the, And part of mm-hmm. that is with this. So, mm-hmm. the, you know, the Archdiocese is going through the beacons of light and mm-hmm. it wouldn't be... It doesn't seem the most prudent to start a year of, you know, whatever, a year mm-hmm. of, you know, mercy. Mm-hmm. And then you get some new parishes in the mix and say, hey, by the way, <laughs> you're six months late for this yeah. year. So sure. catch up. Right. So... Yeah. It's the year of resetting. The year of resetting, <laughs> no. yes. No, okay. Well, that makes sense. That seems prudent. Yeah. So then after we wrap up this calendar year with this year of the Eucharist videos and we finish up this dartboard behind mm-hmm. us, we're moving back to the catechism then? That's that was that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that yeah. sounds good. Okay. Catechism's been missing us, I think. I, well, I've still been open in mine. I don't know what you've been <laughs> doing with yours this past year. Uh, I've opened it a few times. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Great. Okay, well. We should pray. Oh, we haven't done Does that yet. Like? Yeah. yeah, let's do that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for this opportunity to reflect and to give you glory and praise in all that we do. And through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary and Pope St. John Paul II, we pray that our souls may always magnify you and your glory. 
And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, where are we going, Padre? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> We are going to be at the start of the Mass. Mm-hmm. So the dart landed last week on the penitential act and the Gloria. Mm-hmm. But um, whoever made this, me, um, <laughs> kind of doubled up. The penitential <laughs> act's in there and the confidior is in there. And mm-hmm. the confidior is part of the penitential act. So we already did that like 10 weeks ago. Correct. Um, so I think we're just going to like, we'll talk, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the penitential act, but then probably mostly focus on the Gloria. Yes. Okay. So that was season, well, this season, season four, episode 29, when we talked about the Confidior. And so you can go back and listen to that and the penitential act and how that goes. So big idea is we begin at mass with what? Penance. Penance, right? Mercy. Asking for mercy. Mm -hmm. Recognition of our own sinfulness Mm -hmm. and our thoughts and our words, what we've done, what we failed to do. Yes. Through our fault, through our fault, through our most grievous fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? Okay. This sounding familiar. So then we do that. <laughs> it does. I, I, it sounds familiar. That was a question for them. Oh. <laughs> that was a question for them. Yeah. Isn't that I know familiar? I was looking at you and talking yeah. to you. Yeah. You ever done that at Mass, Father? <laughs> but I was talking you to You just skip that because you're not a sinner. <laughs> That's not true. No, he's uh, kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I know. I, I am I'm well aware of my shortcomings. <laughs> so then we go from that to... The Gloria. The Gloria. That's kind of a hard turn. Turn. Yeah. That's right. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, it seems like it. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you ask the Lord for mercy mm-hmm. and he gives mercy. And what's the only reaction except to give him glory and praise? <laughs> Amen. And say, wow, he had mercy upon us. Let's mm-hmm. thank him for that. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so in some ways it kind of makes sense. Yeah. I mean, it really does. It make does. Sense. <laughs> it makes a ton of sense. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So we go from, yeah, repentance and admitting that we're, we're fallen, that we're sinners, that, and, and not just being saying God, telling God, I'm sorry, but actually having true contrition for our right. sin and recognizing who we are and who God is and how great he is. And like you said, when we actually believe that and we're actually showing that contrition towards our sins in our hearts, then what is the natural response? Glory. Holy cow. Yeah. Not holy cow, but glory to God, right? Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> say holy cow wowzers wowzers is right so the tone does shift in the liturgy from this sorrowful repentance to joyful praise as we arrive at the prayer known as the gloria Mm -hmm. right okay and then what were we reading to prep i guess we should mention that again sure as as we have many a times Mm -hmm. old dr edward sree a biblical walk through the mass Mm -hmm. we would highly recommend this Mm -hmm. we haven't talked about recommending it but Mm -hmm. i think we would because we've Mm -hmm. used it so much and we have Gain some fruit from it. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. And it's kind of like it takes these these basic things, especially when you've grown up in the church and you're at Mass every week and you, you've heard these things mm-hmm. over and over and over again, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, yeah. this is what this means. Oh. Well, that's where that came from. That's like, where that oh, came from. whoever came up with them, you know, as they mm-hmm. compiled the Mass, they just mm-hmm. copied and pasted straight from the Bible. Yeah. How about that? Right, right. How about that? Yeah, and he does a beautiful job at... at doing all of that and telling you where all this is coming from. So, okay, so the Gloria is, as you just said, sure. saturated with words from sacred scripture, mm-hmm. right? And he, Dr. Sri lays this out and and also outlines that the prayer itself follows a Trinitarian pattern. So, yeah. right, we have glory to God, and then the center is the Son, and then we end with the Holy Spirit. Right. Mm-hmm. The Trinity. The Trinity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all I got. That's all you got. Well, there is this like the hinge, right? Be, that mm-hmm. you, we kind of t- mentioned, but there's a great little line that I think we sh- it's not little. It's kind of a little paragraph. Oh, yeah, yeah, That yeah. he quotes in here from um, from a book called The Liturgy of the Mass. And it talks about this, um, our own sinfulness and then turning to glory. So it says this, we come to Mass conscious of two things, that we stand greatly in need of redemption and that we have actually been saved. When, of the th- when I think of the first, I recognize my own insignificance. When I realize the second truth, I perceive my strength. In the first, I seek my weakness and utter poverty. In the other, I see my power and greatness. Let us put in the prayerful Kyrie, the Lord have mercy, our yearning for salvation. In the joyful Gloria, let us sing out confidently of our redemption, celebrating thus in every Mass, both Advent and Christmas. I love that. Mm -hmm. We come to Mass conscious of two things. One, that we stand greatly in need of redemption, and two, that we have actually been saved. 
And we hear this right away in the introductory rites in the Kyrie, right? Mm -hmm. The penitential act, the Lord have mercy, and then the Gloria. And he mentions, Dr. Sri mentions this right before that. In the Kyrie, we express our need for salvation and God's mercy. In the Gloria, we joyfully express our gratitude for having received salvation from Christ. Can we like pause? That really made me pause for a second and like marvel at God's wonders and glory him all over again. Like, think about that. Like, we are a people the, the living... Broken. Well, yes, but... Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> living after pieces. Christ came back and redeemed us. Mm-hmm. Like, think about everybody, all the, the generations from the beginning of salvation history who are longing for him, who would have been mm-hmm. this Kyrie, would have been joining us in this Kyrie, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, right? But then all of a sudden, he came and redeemed it's us. fulfilled. And it's fulfilled. And we get to live after the fact. With its effects. Oh my goodness. Wow. Isn't that something? It's a providence. Blessed are we to live in such days. And how often do we forget that, I think, mm-hmm. too, right? We get we get lost in our brokenness and our sinfulness and the brokenness of the world around us and the sinfulness of the world around us that we forget. Hold on now. Mm-hmm. There's been an answer to all of this. Right. <laughs> that answer is Christ, right? And of mm-hmm. course, he doesn't promise us a cross-free world here, right? Quite the opposite. Quite the opposite, exactly. Mm-hmm. But... Be of good yeah. cheer. I've overcome the world. Amen. Mm. It's awesome. It is. And it's awesome to think about even, like we talked about yeah. kind of jokingly, but that harsh turn we go from this sorrowful repentance to all of a sudden we're praising God, but the beauty of that yeah. and the reality of what, what came in between that was Christ incarnate mm-hmm. to save and redeem us all. Right. Glory and that gets God. us back to the Gloria, glory right? That God he in comes eyes. incarnate. Mm-hmm. The word becomes flesh and dwells among us. Mm-hmm. And that's where the glory starts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Mm -hmm. Again, taken straight from the scriptures. Of Mm -hmm. course, the angels coming, appearing to the shepherds outside of Bethlehem to announce to them that Christ has been born. And so often as Mm -hmm. we've been kind of talking about the mass, we've been talking about uh, the sacrifice of the mass and and the last supper and these, the, the end days of Jesus's life. And sometimes well, yeah, we, we just haven't mentioned it as much, and I think it's probably not as cognizant that every Mass is Christmas also. Because mm-hmm. you know what Bethlehem means in Hebrew, right? Bread. House of bread. Yes. So Jesus is born in the house of bread. Mm-hmm. He's placed in a manger, which is not a crib. Mm-hmm. A manger is a place where animals eat. Mm-hmm. So the body of Christ is placed in a, in a place of food. Mm-hmm. And so here we are reliving Christmas again where Christ comes to us as the house of in the house of bread as the as the as the bread that's gonna as the bread of life. Mm-hmm. So glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Yeah. Seriously. He comes to dwell among us, right? Flesh and blood comes to dwell among us at Mass. So every Mass makes <clears throat> present the mystery of Christmas once again. Now I love Christmas, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. See the church decorated, go to the nativity scene, mm-hmm. spend time with your family. Mm-hmm. Um, and think like every mass is that, mm-hmm. that our Lord is comes to dwell among us. It's marvelous. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And every mass also takes us to Calvary mm-hmm. and to the resurrection. It's too much to handle. It's like, like, think about that. Think about that. Like how much anticipation we have for these in a secular to yeah. celebrate Christmas and Easter and all of these things. And every Mass, we're doing this. Right. And, you know, and it's the the logic of how this Mass, how the Mass unfolds mm-hmm. is um, it's the life of Christ, right? It's the gl- So first of all, we have this Kyrie, the Lord have mercy, as you mentioned, the Old Testament, right? Mm-hmm. That's, that's all, Lord have mercy, nothing happens. Mm-hmm. I mean, not nothing happens, but the incarnation doesn't happen, but then it does. Mm-hmm. And so then we move into the Gloria, mm-hmm. right? And then eventually in the liturgy of the word, we get to the gospel, which normally is from the life of Christ, right? His, his public action, his ministry, everything from the baptism of the Jordan to the entry in Jerusalem, all the, the miracles, the prayers in between. Mm-hmm. And then we get to the Eucharistic prayer, which we enter into the Last Supper. And then we get to the offering at the crucifixion. And then after the Our Father, we get to these words, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And that's the message of the risen Christ, right? He's always going around to those to say, peace be with you. That's the message of Jesus Christ risen. And there it is, Mm -hmm. the whole life of Christ laid out for us every time we go to Mass, Mm -hmm. from his birth to his resurrection. Mm -hmm. It's remarkable. It absolutely is. And then at the very end of Mass, we hear these words, go and announce the gospel Mm -hmm. of the the Lord. And that's what Jesus says as he's ascending into heaven. He says, 
go. This mm-hmm. is, now I'm handing on this power, this uh, this need to be witnesses to you. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's the whole life of Christ, right? Right there laid out for us at the mass. Mm. It's remarkable. It absolutely is. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. well. So, well, I, did you did you like this part where he talked about this beginning? Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Now I want to find something. I'm going to find something. No, listen. This part where he talked about how we recognize how good our God is, seeing him as the loving father who, though all powerful, freely chooses to share his goodness with us. We cannot help but worship and give thanks and praise. Here's this part. Like lovers who tell each other over and over in varying ways, I love you, we express our love for God, saying, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you thanks for your great glory. And then most interesting is the last line in which we praise God for his glory. This is an expression of pure praise, loving God, not just for what he does for us, but for who he is for his glorious goodness and love. This idea, like, like yeah, like he mentioned, with like lovers who tell each other over and over again mm-hmm. in a variety of ways, I love you, right? This is what we're doing in this glory. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. We bless you, we adore you, right? These are right. these words of us like calling out to him. And God is a lover who made us mm-hmm. in love, for love, right? By love. Right. And we are to love. Love is reciprocal, right? And so here we are calling out heart to heart, soul to soul here. And then this last line of... We give you thanks for your great glory. It's not, we give you thanks because you healed me. We give you thanks because I got that new car and it's pretty awesome. We give you thanks because you just did whatever I wanted you to do, right? right. We give you thanks because you're God. Right. Because right? you're glorious mm-hmm. in every, yeah, mm-hmm. in who you are. You have existed for all time. Yeah. I can see why you hated that part. I know. It's just <laughs> awful. But it, it does, and... But, you know, the, the comparison to, to people who are in love and mm-hmm. just, con- you know, because even as you say that, you know, we praise you, we bless you, mm-hmm. we do- okay, mm-hmm. come on. <laughs> like, but, but it is, you know, like lovers never, ha- mm-hmm. never tire of telling people how much they appreciate it. It's not like you get sick of hearing it mm-hmm. to say like, oh, you, you actually care about me, mm-hmm. you know, like it, it, it deepens it and you can never, you, you just start stammering eventually. Mm-hmm. But luckily the church gives us words right. so that we just don't start stuttering as <laughs> right. I'm kind of veering in that direction right now. <laughs> anyway, beautiful. So we have this opening where it's God and not only just God in his omnipotence and his almighty power, but God the Father. And you right. see this and that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, God, almighty Father. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Then we moved to the story of Christ in this second part mm-hmm. of the Gloria. And this the second part, the story of Christ also has within it like three different right. acts, three different kind stories. Kind of gets out his life mm-hmm. also. His coming, his redeeming death, and then his resurrection and ascension. We're seeing that. So Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. That's the Christmas mystery, right? Yep. Um, there's a great hymn. I don't know how popular it is, at least in our parishes, but of the father's love begotten mm. is just a beautiful Christmas hymn that describes Christ as, as the begotten one of the father, mm. as the title suggests. <laughs> um, and everything basically from that prologue to John's gospel, right? That the first part of John's gospel, that he's the word that becomes flesh who existed from, from the, from the father's heart. Mm-hmm. So, so that's why that's only begotten son mm-hmm. is the Christmas mystery that mm-hmm. Christ comes forth from the father's heart to dwell, dwell amongst us. And then we have Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. So here we see His redeeming death. Right? Mm-hmm. He's come as the Lamb of God, and remind us remind us of that tie into the Old Testament and the Lamb. Sure, that's on a. It could be on a future podcast because we haven't hit the Exodus chapter twelve yet. Oh well, then uh, I will though. Okay, right, okay. but I'm just like. We don't have many left, and that's one of them. Okay, okay. So, of course, in the Exodus, Mm -hmm. as Moses is trying to bring the people out of Egypt, actually God's bringing the people out of Egypt. Moses just kind of... Through Moses. Through Moses. Uh He's he's there, but he kind of gets in the way, but he's there, and he does a whole lot, and he's... Praise God for Moses. Um, But one of the things is that they'll... They're to slaughter a year-old lamb and then put its blood on the doorpost and then consume the lamb. Mm -hmm. 
And then Jesus calls in John the Baptist points out Jesus is the lamb of God. And then even in the book of revelation, there's a victorious lamb who's standing as, but he's slain. And so Jesus is this new lamb of God. Mm -hmm. And, but it's a recognition of the, the freedom that comes through the lamb, Mm -hmm. the death and the sacrifice of the lamb, which who is Jesus, that salvation happens. That's how it happened for the, uh, for the Israelites as they're in Egypt, right? The death of the lamb, the blood that was shed, that was put upon them. And then of course, consuming the lamb, Mm -hmm. a lot of Eucharistic stuff there. Mm -hmm. Um, that's what saved them and prevented them from, um, the angel coming and, and taking the firstborn. And similarly, Christ is this lamb of God, the fulfillment of the lamb of God, whose blood poured upon us Mm -hmm. saves us and consumed. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so we're hearing this right here right, in the yeah, Gloria. The, the right? Lord God, Lamb of God. Mm-hmm, right. And then Son of the Father. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. So again, here we are, his resurrection and his ascension. Seated at the right hand of the Father, ascended into heaven and is seated there. There's vodka in there. That's, that's <laughs> Wasser. That's Wasser Katrinken, yeah? Das war Deutsch, yeah? That was German. <laughs> You drinking water? Actually, that was probably really broken German where yeah, it didn't actually make yeah. any sense. And I was just I hope saying, somebody comments on I this. I hope somebody like, who actually knows German, yes, corrects yes, me. Please do. Yeah. Because that's, that's my answer. Shout out Tony Monum. <laughs> well, no, we, we speak the same kind of German. I know. So we I can know. carry on a conversation because we say things like that or right, nonsense. Right, but that, that's, where, that's where that came from is your, <laughs> yeah. your, the German that you speak uh-huh. at home, which right. you're probably teaching your son. Right. It's not. It will get you nowhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> fast right all right so we get the lord god lamb of god only begotten son okay what about then for you alone are the holy one you alone are the lord you alone are the most high jesus christ Mm. and this this kind of takes us right into our feast we're celebrating that we talked about right christ the king and this yeah right this idea that only in christ mm -hmm, is salvation mm -hmm. you alone you alone. Mm-hmm. When we do the uh, Easter Vigil, yep. and we sing this for the first time after you know after not, Lent, after Lent, after not singing in all of Lent, when we get to this part, is that where like does something special happen at that time when we get to the for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High? No, I'm making it up. We ring the bells the whole time in the glory. Yeah. Okay. So I must have been making that up, or I'll just say maybe it was, the Lord did something. In you, yeah. you know, like something hits you. Yeah, well, last, last Easter visual, it, I feel like like the lights were like off or dark, and all of a sudden at that exact part, everything got really bright, and like the you alone are the holy one, but I made it up. It's all good. Well, they could have came on, but maybe it was coincidental. Yeah. Not so coincidental? Sure. Who knows? Well, anyway, it's a powerful part. It is. To think that if our, our, if our hearts and our lives and our souls are rightly ordered, this is what they would be ordered to. And he's the only one, right? Mm-hmm. You alone mm-hmm. are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You mm-hmm. alone are the Most High. Mm-hmm. That it's Christ alone, right? There's no there's no competing gods. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's kind of come up a little bit recently, you know, like even with the, you know, it. and I was just reading something about Christ and Satan. I got this, speaking, we were talking new books earlier. Mm-hmm. I, I got a, a book about Christ and Satan. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they're they're depicted as like equals, right? Mm-hmm. And even this is this is in other religions, right? Good and bad, the yin, the yang, all of this. And that's not Christian, mm-hmm. right? Jesus Christ alone is the Lord. He's not in competition with any other gods. He's mm-hmm. not in competition with, you know, whatever, a, a demiurge or something that other religions say, but he alone is sovereign. And mm-hmm. everything is subject to him. Mm-hmm. So back up off our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God alone. That would be a good, like, just a prayerful thing to keep in your heart, like, all day long. Like, every time, like, to reset yourself and, like, you know, the top of every hour, just go God alone and, like, quickly think mm. about the ways perhaps the past hour that wasn't the case. And, yeah. And refocus on him. God alone. Okay. Um, yeah. Anything else with that? Cause then we just end, right? We end in this homage to the Holy spirit with the Holy spirit and the glory of God, the father. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. With the Holy spirit. So the Holy spirit gets that, as you were mentioning mm-hmm. the Trinitarian, mm-hmm. um, the Trinitarian, um, nature of the, of the Gloria that it ends with this Holy spirit and the glory of God in the glory of God, the father. So mm-hmm. it's not, and the glory of God, the father, but it's in the glory of God, the father. Mm-hmm. And they're in the, uh, in the old Testament. I don't know. I don't remember if he points this out or not. Mm. Is this, this about the glory of God is the, um, and the, there was this glory cloud, you know, as the tent was as the, uh, the tent, 
the meeting tent was there, the glory of God would descend upon it. And, and in some ways, that's the, that's the precursor to the Spirit. Maybe it could be, I don't know, maybe biblical scholars, people who know more than me would say that is the Spirit of the Lord descending mm-hmm. upon them. And so Christ is present in, in the Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Mm-hmm. So, so we gave it another Old Testament yeah. shout out. And we just did that last week, right? Right. Didn't we just do the, the meeting, meeting tent? tent? Right. That's awesome. And then in our reading today, there was also even a quote from St. Albert the Great. Did you catch that? I did. I did. And today we're recording... On the feast day. On the feast day. Of St. Albert, Albert the Great. The great. <laughs> that's great. Who's throwing that dart anyway? Well, it's uh, not me. That's one sure. <laughs> hand's throwing the dart, another one's guiding it. <laughs> so we have in the Gloria, as Dr. Sri points out, the very climax of salvation history can be summed up mm-hmm. in the Gloria. Yeah? Yeah. Right? And we have these two, you know, sometimes we can get confused about our faith and what we believe as Christians and what we believe in our faith and how we're supposed to live our faith out. But we really take time to pay attention to what we're praying at the Mass it's all right there, right? We have this all history of salvation summed up in the Gloria. When we have, when we recite the creed, like we've talked about mm-hmm. in past episodes, here is everything, all our parts of it and what we believe, right? This penitential act that we pray at the beginning, here's us, we are sinners, like admitting that we are, sure. we are sinners and we need, we need the Lord to come and save us. And anyway, it's all right there. And it points to the real importance of the sacred liturgy. And I, I told you beforehand, I'm reading this biography mm-hmm. of Pope Benedict. And mm-hmm. that was one of the things that Pope Benedict uh, made a, like an important point of his time as the Archbishop of Munich um, in, the, in the 70s and then like 80, 81. And then as the Pope, that the liturgical life of the church has to take supreme importance. And there's so many other things that the church can get involved in, whether mm-hmm. it's commenting on political matters or, or even the catechesis and all of this. Mm-hmm. But the liturgy is central because it's the work that we do towards the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that has an effect on us Mm -hmm. and it it forms us. It it, it guides us and it speaks to us. It teaches Christians the way, the way of life. And it even orients our life properly. Mm -hmm. It's part of why we're doing this whole year of the Eucharist is because the liturgy is, is us entering into the divine mystery and being formed by it and offering ourselves to it. Mm-hmm. And so that's why this takes such prime importance and that's why that's why when we reflect upon it and we see all of the all of the 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 nuts the bolts the essence of the Christian life communicated to us mm-hmm. and our response to that, right? Whether it's the great amen or whether it's us professing the faith like or even just the body of Christ individually offered to each one of us and we get to say amen. Mm-hmm. So that's why this the mass is so essential. That's why it's that's why it's uh, required for Catholics to come mm-hmm. every Sunday and Holy Day, mm-hmm. is because life apart from it, we're not going to be we're not going to be authentic Christians. I mean that, mm-hmm. I like unless we go to Mass every single Sunday, mm-hmm. because we need that to form us, to nourish us, so that we don't create our own our our religion and our own image and likeness. Mm-hmm. And so, this great gift of the Mass keeps us um, keeps us grounded in in the authentic teaching life of Jesus Christ. So, Amen. And it's from that, that all of our good works should flow. Right. 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 Mm-hmm. And we get to meet him every, you know, like that whole life of Christ mm-hmm. is laid out for us every single time that we go to mass, mm-hmm. especially the Sunday mass. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So don't skip mass on Sundays, but if you do, there's mercy in the confessional. That's right. Go to confession before you receive Holy communion. So Thank uh, you. If you skip mass on Sunday, right? Skip. Uh, oh, sorry, I'm just making all these decisions. No, do it. Now. Skip, not miss. Right? If you're sick, or you know you had a child and you're in the hospital, missing mass on Sunday is not the mortal sin. Mm-hmm. It's skipping mass on Sundays when you could go and you don't. Right? Mm-hmm. And 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 that doesn't mean like if it's a sports event. You make time for what's important. But if there's a legitimate, whether it's you're elderly and you can't get there, you're sick, or you know. You're on a you're on a navy vessel in the middle of the Pacific Ocean sure. and you can't make it to mass, right? Right. So if you just miss because you can't make it, that's mm-hmm. one thing. If you skip because mm-hmm. you had other things to do, that's serious. Mm-hmm. Get to confession mm-hmm. and then get back to mass. Mm-hmm. Amen. So that's awesome. Yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. All right. We're running short on squares. Okay. Well, Good luck then as you throw. I'm kind of leaning towards you going to what we kind of were talking about. Where is that? Oh! <laughs> and 
don't answer me. Just throw it and do it. And he got Exodus 12. Nice, man. Thank you. I'm so proud of you. Are you? I am. So proud of you. I got to leave here and set up that play date for you and your friend to go to Burger King. So I don't know who this friend, if I got any takers, let me know. No. (laughs) No. My mom never let me use the F word growing up. Friends. Friends. Yeah, I know. I know. I felt like I needed to verify what you were saying there. (laughs) That's what makes so, it so funny. Oh, would it be um, would it be wrong for us to just close in praying the Gloria? So no, pray no, that'd be great. Okay. Do you want to sing it? Well, <laughs> we can. I don't have it in front of me, but I'll no. follow your lead. No, okay, no, just kidding. Okay, just kidding. All right, in the Father and the Son, and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit Amen. Amen. Glory to, to God, God in the highest, highest and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. goodwill. We We praise you, you, we bless you, you, we adore you, you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen.